Right, a common question that uh, some investors have about the markets is how is it possible to always do a trade? Uh, I mean, after all, um, if you try and sell your house, for example, you may find that it takes months and months and months for someone to actually buy it. And it can seem, therefore, at least in nominal terms, impossible to do a deal. Well, the answer to that question in the equity markets is market makers. So we're going to have a quick look at what market makers do. Now, before I mention market makers, I should just mention that in most markets, you can always do a deal. It's only human nature that suggests that you can't. For example, people who do say, do you know what, I'm struggling to sell my house. I'm afraid the brutal answer to that is drop the price. If your house was available for a fiver, lots of people would happily buy it. So often in markets, a deal can be done. It's just a case of finding the right price. All right, but the London Stock Exchange and exchanges like it don't want to take the risk that people rely on it as a place to do a deal, and then there is no one the other side. So you want to buy lots of shares as a member of the exchange or as an investor, and someone's going to sell them to you. Who is that someone? Or you want to sell a load of shares, someone's got to be able to prepare to buy them. So market makers across the global exchanges provide huge amounts of what's called liquidity. And what I'll do is mention their role and then hit you with a couple of warnings about the prices that they sometimes quote. A couple of things not to fall into in terms of market maker traps, let's say. OK, so market makers. Uh, where would you find market makers? The answer is in almost every market. There are currency market makers, share market makers, bond market makers. Um, the difference in the stock market, for example, where there are these recognized exchanges, London Stock Exchange, New York Stock Exchange, and so on, is that those exchanges like to encourage deals. And to do that, you need to have a market. All right. Uh, otherwise, it'd be a bit like wandering down to your local fruit and veg market and finding that there is no fruit and veg for sale. Bit of a disappointment. All right. Stock exchanges need to have a continuous market running where people can reliably buy and sell the shares that are listed there. So what would a market maker typically be? Well, it would be a big bank or a brokerage. Uh, unfortunately, this being financial markets, the names vary. So in New York, you have people who are a bit like market makers called specialists, for example. But over here in the, in the UK market, they're generally referred to just as market makers. All right. So the big banks and one or two of the brokerage houses spring to mind. What are they doing? Okay. Well, market makers are basically obliged at places like the London Stock Exchange to offer quotes all day. Now, what does that mean, all day? Well, generally between the hours of about 8 and about 4.30 for a big exchange, okay, all day quotes so that people can trade shares at the London Stock Exchange. And those quotes come in sort of two halves, okay. Market makers need to be able to make money. They're not charities after all. So a typical market maker will have a price that's called a bid offer price, and the gap is a spread. Now, people get confused sometimes at this point. Just be careful in the currency markets, the bond markets, the share markets, just make sure you know how these spreads are working. All right. So if I'm a market maker, I might say, well, it's um, X, Y, Z shares that I'm going to quote a price in. Just made up the name of the company there, X, Y, Z shares. So the bid price is, uh, I'm going to make it 100p. And the offer price is, let's say, 120p. And that means the gap between the two, or the spread, as it's known, is 20p at the moment. Now, uh, a market maker at London Stock Exchange will put that up on an electronic board somewhere, let's say. And as an investor, you'd need to know how to translate it. And actually, as an investor in any part of the markets, you need to know how to translate this. So if you're going on, on holiday and buying currency, for example, it's important to know how these bid offer prices work. So a quick summary there. First off, this is the price that the market maker buys at. And this is the price that the market maker sells at. OK, uh, sells what? X, Y, Z shares. So just bear in mind, if you were coming to do a deal with this market maker, expecting to trade, for example, uh, what you would be doing is selling at their bid price and buying at their offer price. So I could put you sell, you buy. In other words, market makers will try and rip you off. All right. So if you come along saying, oh, I'd like to buy some XYZ shares, they're going to try and dump them on you at the highest possible price from their point of view. And if you come along saying, I'd like to sell some XYZ shares, 
well, clearly they're going to try and buy them as cheaply as possible. So in other words, market makers like dealers in cars, for example, like fruit and veg sellers, uh, will try and buy low, sell high. All right? And the spread is how much money they make. Now, here's some jargon. The wider the spread, the bigger the profit for the market maker. All right? And here's the first takeaway point. The more market makers there are competing to trade XYZ shares, and the number can vary in practice between a handful and 30, 40, 50, the more of them there are, the narrower the spread will be. All right? So that means there's less profit for the market maker, and you can trade the share more cost effectively. And the other thing to watch out for is that when you ask for a price from a broker, you'll probably be quoted a mid-market price. If you look up a price in a newspaper, for example, just be careful, because often the price that's quoted at the end of the day, for example, is the mid-market price. So here, somewhere around 110p. But that's not the price you can trade those shares at. To know what price you can actually do a deal to buy or sell, you need the bid to offer spread. Okay? So if the mid-market price on this share is 110p, and there's just the one market maker in the market, then the offer price is 120, that's the price you can actually buy shares at, and the bid price is 100, that's the price you can actually sell shares at. Uh, and be a little bit careful, because if there aren't many market makers for a particular stock, okay, then these spreads can get very, very wide very quickly. All right? Indeed, sometimes the price quoted may only be at what they call indicative, which means someone's got to put a phone call into the market maker to find out whether it's even possible to trade at all. That's not true at some of the London Stock Exchange, where market makers have to offer what they call two-way prices all day. That's only 8 to 4.30. It doesn't mean 9 in the evening, necessarily. That's in sort of normal market hours, and at a minimum size that the exchange deems uh, keeps the market liquid. Okay? So, in summary, market makers are a vital part of the equity markets, currency markets, bond markets. Okay? As a retail investor, you typically won't deal with them directly. You'll tend to go through a broker. But it's market makers that essentially keep the market to buy and sell shares running because they have this obligation to be prepared to trade uh, all day during hours and at volume set by the London Stock Exchange. Okay? Two key pointers to watch out for. Number one, if you see a mid-market price, always ask your broker for the spread. Make sure you've got that information. Okay? And number two, as soon as you start trading shares which are not that popular, you will find these spreads start to widen against you. All right, and one more little takeaway. Even in a popular share, if volatility suddenly hits the market, spreads can jump. All right, watch out for that, particularly if you're into spread betting, something I cover in another video, because you can get a bit of a shock. Okay, if you think you're going to close out a position and you've got a price in mind, suddenly volatility changes, uh, spreads do that, and all of a sudden, you can't get out of the contract at the price you expected to.